Hey friends, welcome to Ghosh for AI. I'm Shonandu Ghosh and today I'm here with a video about my own field of interest. Now my field of interest is known by many names, artificial intelligence, machine learning, data science, pattern recognition, and so on. Now all these terms have a very similar meaning, but they're also different in certain key aspects. I'd like to talk about all of these today. But before we progress, I'd like you to know that I love making videos about artificial intelligence, machine learning, and all these uh, stuffs. Uh, I also uh, plan to make videos about theoretical concepts and uh, codes about new uh, kind of algorithms and stuff. So if you don't want to miss out on those, please subscribe to my channel. Uh, now, so coming back to the subject. So many students who have just uh, reach their high, you know, higher education like the high school or just uh, gone into college or universities uh, taking computer as a subject they have come across this term of artificial intelligence a lot I'm sure because uh, with uh, the rising social media especially uh, this term is everywhere and not only this term but also terms like data science and IOT and uh, machine learning deep learning so these words, like if people search them on Google, they can find a lot of interesting things. But to understand truly, like to truly understand something, you have to know a bit about the history of the things, right? So I'm going to talk about what these terms actually mean. So I'm going to start with artificial intelligence. Now, it was uh, coined in around 1956 in the Dartmouth Artificial Intelligence Conference. It was uh, one of the first of its kind so I was uh, when I was researching about this topic I I was uh, I found this like this one at Dartmouth artificial intelligence conference this was the place where this term first came uh, in written documents actually so uh, John McCarthy he called some of the best computer scientists of that era and started uh, this uh, conference and asking everybody to think about uh, developing systems that are intelligent. So if you see, the study is to proceed on the basis of the conjecture that every aspect of learning or any other feature of intelligence can in principle be so precisely described that a machine can be made uh, to simulate it. So they are asking people to formalize the way human beings think so that they can create machines to mimic that uh, thinking um, in presently like if we try to find the definition of artificial intelligence we can find many definitions in many books given by many authors but the most common thing that I have seen is artificial intelligence is a way of mimicking human intelligence and that's why the term comes it's artificial it's intelligence just like humans but it's artificial in nature there is also another way of uh, explaining it that is by defining the, uh, you know like what is intelligence itself like we are saying that humans human beings are intelligent but what makes them intelligent what makes us intelligent is number one we analyze our surroundings with our organs we can uh, we can be perceptive of our surroundings we can see things we can hear things we can smell things and once we have all those inputs we react in a certain way now our reaction is not random our reaction is focused towards attainment of a specific goal and as we grow up we learn new things and in this process of learning we get better at reacting to these surroundings and we get better at getting uh, more success regarding the goal, the purpose of the reaction. Now, with this concept of intelligence in mind, what we have to see is artificial intelligence can be uh, any machine. You know, any machine can be called artificially intelligent if it does these things, if it takes some inputs from its surroundings and it reacts in a way 
that some goal is achieved uh, so if if i want to give you an example say let's talk about a small robot which has to traverse some uh, terrain or let's talk about a more practical uh, example like the curiosity rover on mars now imagine the ter the terrain is uh, some somewhat rough and it's taking pictures now if it can smartly detect which is the safe path to proceed like should it turn left or should it turn right or should it move straight ahead so if it can perceive the surroundings and make these decisions then it has said to be artificially intelligent because because it's making some smart decisions and hence comes the word artificial intelligence itself now I would request the fellow viewers to read up upon this because this is one of the keystones in the history of artificial intelligence and uh, I would uh, seriously ask people to read up on this uh, Dartmouth artificial intelligence conference and not only that I, I would also ask uh, them to read about John McCarthy himself so he was a computer scientist he was one of the earliest uh, receivers of the Turing award and he was associated with some of the best universities like Stanford, uh, MIT, Princeton, Dartmouth College and so on and the, he started like this uh, you know this AI thing like it's, he promoted AI in a way so that the future generation can really start working on it. Now um, uh, if you remember the definition we uh, gave about intelligence itself like we perceive our surroundings so that was the first part of the definition and with that we can define another new term that's called pattern recognition so what happens when we perceive our surrounding what happens is say in the same example like if a robot has to uh, go through a terrain what it's getting is some images of the ground in front of him now what it has to do it has to recognize some regularities or some irregularities in the ground to understand which is the safe path so understanding these patterns in the inputs that we get or in the inputs that the system gets is called pattern recognition it may seem that both of these are speaking of the same thing but Artificial intelligence, I think, is a more broader concept, defining the end goal of a system. We want our systems to be artificially intelligent. But to do that, the first step that we need to do is pattern recognition. Whatever data that we get, we have to analyze it. We have to find regularities or irregularities within it so that once we understand those patterns, it will be easier for us to make the decisions or in this case easier for the machines to make the decisions in the second part we say that we react to whatever input we have got in the surrounding and as we grow up we learn to react in a better way because we gain more experience now this was a definition given by Tom Mitchell and this is one of the most famous definitions of machine learning itself so if we go to the wikipedia page of machine learning and if we scroll down we can see that tom mitchell provided a widely quoted and formal definition of machine learning now it says a computer program is said to learn from experience e with respect to some class of tasks t and performance measure p if its performance at the tasks t as measured by p improves with experience E. It may sound confusing but let me simplify this for you. So what happens as we said as we have more experience we get better at something. Similarly a machine which said is said to be learning when it's gaining experience with time and getting better at doing a certain job. Now to do all this what we need is we need a good definition of the job itself and that is defined by the task T. We need 
a way to measure the amount of success that we are getting in while doing the job and that is the performance measure P and whatever it's learning during this time is called experience. So machine learning then we can say it's a process of getting better at what the machine is supposed to do. Um, and finally there is this new term called data science. Now this term data science is it has I think surfaced very recently like the last decade perhaps and it kind of brings all of these together. It brings fields like cognitive science, psychology, biology, um, computer science, electronics, networking and communications, um, data mining, mathematics, statistics. It brings all these subjects together under one roof. Uh, the term data science is I think more commonly used in the industries rather than the research world. Um, but again, th th this has mainly, uh, and I think this has mainly surfaced due to the um, this huge boost in the amount of information that is being gathered, especially through internet. Like we are getting um, like billions of videos being uploaded every day in YouTube, or we are getting so many uh, posts in social media like Facebook, Twitter. It, it's 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 like a mass collection of public sentiments. And we have uh, things like medical records being uh, documented digitally or we have these uh, space explorations or say research at uh, laboratories like CERN which is being digitally documented and this is huge amount of data and all, with, and all of these needs to be processed so that we can understand them. Uh, I think that's why this term data science, uh, you know, data science has come because now it's more about understanding the data itself uh, like uh, there was uh, this uh, uh, I, I saw this uh, term about data science let me find that for you um, here the steering award winner Jim Gray he told data science as the fourth paradigm you know because the earlier paradigms was empirical theoretical and computational like the one you do with experiments, the one you do hypothetically with theorems, and one you do through with using computers, like you compute, you compute something, you predict something. And now with this huge amount of data, all of the algorithms are becoming data driven, especially the class of deep learning algorithms, they're becoming data driven. And uh, hence, uh, it can be called as the fourth paradigm of uh, science. So. You get uh, so many, uh, this, uh, there are like four terms here, artificial intelligence, machine learning, data science, pattern recognition, but I guess now you know how all of these interconnect with each other, but all of them are different in some respects uh, by their own definitions. And I, I would also like to point one thing, because this term data science, it's often uh, confused with data mining. Now, data mining is something about uh, managing data like how you store data efficiently how you retrieve them how you process them efficiently uh, so that's what data mining is about and data mining is a part of data science but it's not data science in its entirety but anyways uh, i think uh, I, this is enough for today and i will bring more concepts about artificial intelligence in the next video uh, until then, goodbye and have a very good time. Thank you so much. Hey, if you enjoyed the video, give me a thumbs up or give me a thumbs down and tell me how I can improve this video for you guys. Also, if you have any doubts or any queries or if you want to see some new videos on some new topics based on artificial intelligence or machine learning or deep learning, feel free to write in the comments. If you want to see more videos like this, subscribe to my channel and don't forget to press the bell icon so that you can get the notifications. Have a very good day and thank you so much.